Shortly after I became a Christian, someone wrote in the flyleaf of my Bible these words, this book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. And I believe that's still true. Dusty Bibles always lead to dirty lives. The only option confronting a Christian is this. You are either in the Word, and the Word is forming Jesus Christ in you, or you are in the world, and the world is squeezing you into its mold. There are more Bibles in print today than in human history. And many Christians have one, and in some cases, a half a dozen. But they don't read them. They don't study them. They don't apply them. Why is that true? I think because most people do not know how. That was my problem as a new Christian. And the first year of my Christian life, I never opened this book. I didn't know where to begin. I didn't know how to go about the process. So in this first session, I want to ask and answer three basic questions. Why study the Bible? There are three reasons which conspire to build a convincing case that personal Bible study is not an option. It's an essential. First, it is important because personal Bible study is essential to growth. In 1 Peter chapter 2, in verse 2, we read, As newborn babes develop an appetite for the spiritual milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Three things I want you to underline about this passage. First of all, it speaks to your attitude toward the word of God. It's the attitude of a newborn baby. Just as the baby grabs for the bottle, you grab for the book. All of us who have had children know what it is to hear a screaming baby in the midst of a night of sleep. That child must be satisfied, and as soon as the child gets the milk he needs, there is a great calm. But secondly, he says something about your appetite, and that is, as newborn babes develop an appetite, all of us have had the experience of strongly rejecting foods as a child. But as we grew up and began to eat those foods, we developed an appetite. And when people say to me, you know, I'm not getting very much out of the Word, that's more of a commentary on the individual than it is on the Scripture. It requires the development of a spiritual appetite. But it, don't miss it. This Bible, this text, sets forth the aim of the Word of God, that you may grow thereby. Not know. You can't grow without knowing, but it is possible to know and not grow. There's a second reason, and that is personal Bible study is essential to spiritual maturity. Study the passage for yourself. It's Hebrews chapter 5 verses 11 through 14, where the writer informs us, I've got a difficulty, and the difficulty is a deficiency in hearing. When, by virtue of time, and you need to underline the word time in your text, we ought to be going on to the college department, we need to return to the kindergarten and learn the ABCs all over again. But there's only one way, he suggests, and that is that you discipline yourselves and you develop godliness as a result of your own exposure to the Word of God. Third reason, and that is personal Bible study, is essential to spiritual effectiveness. And the passage you want to study is 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17, where Paul says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That includes all 66 books. Nothing included which should have been excluded, nothing excluded that should have been included. 
And he says it's all profitable. In fact, it's profitable for four things. It's first of all profitable for teaching. Secondly, it's profitable for reproof. Third, it's profitable for correction. And finally, it is profitable for instruction in righteous living. It not only tells you what's right, it tells you what's wrong. It not only tells you how to correct it, but how to continue to live according to God's purpose for your life. How can you afford not to study with such convincing reasons as this? And never forget, there is no growth apart from the Word of God.